I'm somebody who enjoys going to thrift stores and occasionally pawn shops. I love saving money and finding good deals. I buy a lot of used items, and I've probably saved lots of money over the years. I occasionally like to browse Facebook Marketplace for good deals on stuff. There usually is most of the things I don't want or need, so I don't buy. But every now and then I find a deal that's too good to pass up. This story takes place about six months ago. Up until that point, I had probably purchased about three or four things on Facebook Marketplace. All of the experiences had been good to that point. As I was scrolling through the items for sale one day, I came across an iPhone. It was unlocked, meaning it could work with any service provider. All you needed was the SIM card. This was two generations newer than mine, and it was a very reasonable price. I kind of needed a new phone, plus there were no noticeable problems to it, and it's said to be in like, new condition. It was a new listing as well, so I was excited. I tried to jump on it fast. I reached out to the seller, who responded back to me rather quickly. He was a man and was not all that far away. I tried to make arrangements to buy the phone as soon as possible and said whenever he was free would work for me as well. We agreed to meet the next day at a nearby Target store. This was the biggest and most popular store in the area, and it was also close to us both. The next day I drove to Target with the money, and I was excited to buy my new phone. I knew that I was getting a really good deal. I arrived about 10 minutes before the meeting and went inside Target. After walking around for a while, the time came. I sent a message letting the seller know that I was inside the Target. I was looking around, but I couldn't find him. After about 10 more minutes went by, he finally texted me back. He apologized and said that something had come up and he couldn't make it that night. I was disappointed, but I told him, okay, maybe tomorrow. I decided to leave Target then and not get anything. After going back to my car and driving away, I was followed for several miles by a blue four-door sedan. Of course, I suspected maybe it was the same guy who was selling me the phone and this was some kind of setup. Maybe I'm paranoid, but when buying things on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, those kind of things always pop into my head. I couldn't tell who was driving the car behind me, but it did look to be a male. I didn't want him following me all the way home and I decided to pull over on the side of the road. It was a standard and somewhat busy road, and at first, the car behind me started to pull over as well, but when I came to a full stop, he then pulled back onto the road and sped past me. I tried to look inside the car when he passed by, but I didn't get a very good look at all. After the car passed me by, I waited and watched it go out of sight. Then I got back onto the road and drove the rest of the way back home to my house. After getting back and going inside, it wasn't long before I glanced out the window and happened to see the same car. It was going extremely slow down the road. I ducked down so he wouldn't see me. The car passed by my house and then went out of sight. About a minute later, I saw it driving back from the other direction. It didn't stop at my house or anything, but it was driving really slow. I just hoped that guy didn't know where I lived. After that, I decided to block the seller on Facebook. I had no interest in buying the phone anymore. To this day, I don't know for sure if that was the same person who was following me home or driving down my street. I do think it was the seller from Facebook, though. I also don't think he knows my exact address, but he somehow figured out the street that I live on. Either way, nothing strange happened and I'm glad to say everything's been fine since last year. Last year, I put my pool table on Facebook Marketplace. I had it in my basement and it wasn't in the greatest of shape, plus I never really used it. It was taking up a lot of space and I knew I needed to get rid of it. I listed it on Facebook Marketplace for a price that was pretty high. I was in a huge hurry to sell it, but I wanted to get a good price for it. It wasn't a crazy high price, but you could probably find a nicer pool table for a little less if you tried. After listing it, the pool table received no interest. I wasn't surprised, and after a few weeks went by, I got the first message about it. It was a guy named Jim and he told me right away that he wanted to buy the pool table. 
We messaged back and forth for a little while and then made an appointment for Jim to come by and purchase the pool table. I really hadn't expected to sell it for this price and figured that Jim would try to negotiate when he got to my house. I had a set price in my head that I was willing to go down to. Jim came over at about 6 p.m. On a weeknight after work. When he got to my house, I let him in and then showed him down to the basement where the pool table was. He looked at it for a few minutes and then agreed to buy it. I watched him take out all the cash of the full listing price and then give it to me. I was shocked, but more than happy to accept it. I told Jim that it was his now and I would help him load it into his truck. Luckily, he had a pretty big pickup truck and it would just fit. It was a bit of a pain to move the coffee table into his truck, but we got it done. He then left and I felt really good about the price that I had gotten. I truly didn't think that I would be able to sell the table for that much after this. Almost two weeks went by. Then I got a message from Jim. He told me that he felt that he had gotten ripped off and he could have gotten a better deal. Now this was over a week later, so I wasn't going to take the table back. I told him it's been over a week and a deal is a deal. This obviously didn't make Jim very happy. He argued with me for a while, telling me to give him some money back, but I refused. I didn't have to give him anything, and he should have tried to negotiate or looked around for a better deal if he really wanted one. I felt that this wasn't my responsibility to help him out. We ended up leaving the conversation on not a very good note but I felt that it was over. A few days went by and Jim didn't reply to me at all. Then things got strange. My girlfriend was over at my house one night for dinner, and at one point she got up from the table and told me that she saw some guys standing in the front yard. I got up and we both walked over near the window. When we got there, I didn't see anybody, but I did notice a white truck parked out on the street. I realized that it was Jim's truck. I remembered it from when I helped him load the pool table. In it I told my girlfriend of the story of how he was mad about the price. We looked all around the house through the windows, but we couldn't find Jim. We were going from window to window, and when I finally returned to the front of the house, I opened the front door. As I did, I saw the truck starting up and drive away. I decided to message Jim and tell him that I knew he was at my house, but when I went online to do so, he had blocked me. Two nights later he was prowling around outside again. This time I was by myself and in the living room watching TV. I noticed out of the corner of my eye a man walking past the front window. About a minute later I heard my front doorknob turn, but thankfully it was locked. I didn't waste any time and I called the police. However, Jim left pretty soon after I did, and he was long gone before the police got there. I told them the whole situation and asked what they could do. After that, I felt confident that the police would be able to look into it and I wouldn't have any problems from Jim again. But the very next morning as I left my house to go to work, I was walking to my car. Right as I was about five feet, from my driver's door, I heard somebody sprinting behind me. I looked around to see Jim running at me with full force. I chose to run back into my house instead of going for my car door. This gave me a slight amount of distance on Jim, and I somehow made it inside right before he got to the door. This time he was really mad. He tried opening my front door and then went to the window when it was locked, and he started banging on my window. I called the police again, who arrived in a very fast time when Jim was still there. He was caught and luckily didn't do any damage to my house. This experience caused me to stop using Facebook Marketplace for the time being. I know there are many good people who use it, but I would recommend anybody to not give out your address and be careful. I was selling an old coffee table on Facebook Marketplace. I was only asking $40 for it and it was in good shape, but it was nothing too special. It was kind of old, so I figured it was a reasonable price. It took a while to receive any kind of interest. After a couple of weeks though, I did get one person who asked about it. It was a guy named Spike. He asked me if I was willing to do 30 for the table. I said sure, I was happy to get anything for it and if it didn't sell, I would probably just give it to Goodwill. He asked when would be a good time for him to come over and pick it up. 
I told him the next night between 5 and 7 p.m. Would be fine if it worked for him. He agreed to the time and I gave him my address. I was happy to finally get rid of the old table. The next day, I moved my table to right inside my front door so it would be easy for Spike to just grab it and go after paying me. When 5 o'clock came, I hadn't received any kind of messages from Spike, so I assumed that he would be there any time. However, as time went by, it was soon 7 o'clock and Spike didn't show up. I decided to go on Facebook and message Spike to see if he was still coming when I got onto Facebook though, I saw that Spike had blocked me. This was really confusing. Our conversations had gone great and I didn't understand why he would do that. Still, I guess he just wouldn't buy my coffee table and I put it back. I kept the listing up in hopes that maybe somebody else would buy it, but things remained quiet. Fast forward to about a week later. It was a normal weeknight and I was in my living room. I was just about to get ready for bed and it was probably like 10 or 11 at night. That's when I heard my back door rattling. I live alone and I wasn't expecting anybody, plus, I rarely use the back door. Immediately I had a bad feeling. I started walking over to my kitchen area, which is in the back of the house and is where the back door is. I was maybe halfway there when I heard the sound of glass breaking. It was also coming from that same area. That's when I froze right where I was, and I turned around and dashed for the hallway. I ran for my bedroom, which had a locking door. I got inside and locked myself in. Meanwhile, in my house I heard some noises in the kitchen. I knew that somebody had broken in, and my first response once inside my room was to call the police. I tried to be as quiet as I could when doing so. As I was speaking with the 911 operator, I was also hearing footsteps inside. I moved all the way into my closet. I was told that the police would be there as soon as they could. Once I was off the phone with the police, I stopped hearing noises throughout the house. I was in there being as quiet as I could and hoping that I did not hear any more noises. Eventually, the police arrived and made their way inside. It wasn't until I was sure it was safe that I left my closet and bedroom. Whoever had been in my house, though, was gone. The police couldn't find them anywhere. I did, however, see the broken window and the damage that it caused. The area was searched, but police never found anybody. That really creeps me out. To this day, I really think that it was Spike who broke in. I had just given him my address the week prior, and why would he block me so randomly? I gave the information to the police, but I never got any word if they found him or if it was in fact Spike who broke into my house. 